Welcome to the ITU studio in Geneva, where I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Dr. Raul Katz, who is the Director of Business Strategy Research at the Columbia Institute for Teleinformation at Columbia University. Raul Katz, welcome to the studio. Thank you very much. Now, I'd like to start off uh, by talking about the fact that we're here at the uh, WTIS 18. Uh, a lot of uh, figures being banded about here, about the impact of ICTs on the economy and society. Uh, from your research, what's the impact of ICTs on the economy and society? And is this impact the same globally and on an individual level, on a country level? Yeah. Well, th there's a volume of evidence that actually points to the fact that it has been clearly established that uh, ICT as a whole has an impact on the economy and on society. Uh, and when I mean volume of evidence, I mean in terms of both econometric work, experimental work, even qualitative analysis being done internationally. The, the um, issue though is that because of the wealth of data that is becoming available right now, we have the ability to start digging in further into particular groups of country, which answers partially your second question, in the sense that not all impact is uniform or homogeneous across the globe. In fact, the more um, research we're conducting, we understand that, for instance, fixed broadband is having uh, a higher impact in the more advanced economies. Uh, we have um, an effect called the return to scale the more advanced economies have higher or larger infrastructures on fixed broadband and therefore the economic effects are larger than in the emerging uh, countries. Um, on the other hand, when you look at mobile broadband, uh, the effect is the reverse in the sense of the emerging countries, uh, emerging broadband has a, a larger effect, a higher effect economically than in the more advanced countries. We there have the um, reverse of these return to scale and we have a saturation effect whereby the higher the development of a country, the lesser the impact that you're going to see in mobile broadband. Thus, what you can see is that in the aggregate, the technology such as broadband or ICTs in general having an impact, you have to start digging on the specificities of every single country because differences uh, appear in terms of level of economic development, level of a development of the infrastructure and the like uh, by country. Let's talk about keeping track of numbers. Why is it important to keep track of numbers in the ICT sector? After all, many countries are now reaching saturation levels. Well, uh, yeah, it's, uh, saturation is, 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 is an interesting concept because even in those countries that you can say have reached an advanced level of penetration, you still have a portion of the population that doesn't access the internet or that uh, is served by networks and therefore covered by networks but do not necessarily use it. Thus, the, it is important to continue tracking the numbers to understand uh, precisely what happens to, first, those people in rural and isolated areas that don't have uh, access to, to infrastructure, which even in advanced economies could be, in the United States for instance, 5% of the population doesn't have access to broadband because the networks don't reach them. Uh, secondly, uh, you need to understand those that are being served but do not use it. Why is it that they do not use it? Is it a problem of um, did lack of digital literacy? Is this a problem of affordability? Uh, you, 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 so you need to understand that fact. And then you need, th there's another factor that is important which leads to this fourth industrial revolution, which has to do with, well, what happens with the businesses that have access to the technology, but you do not necessarily see the impact on their productivity? Uh, because obviously the impact can be uh, detected in large enterprises, but not necessarily in small and medium enterprises. And that is critical for economic growth as well. So still, uh, we, we have long ways to go in terms of actually getting an understanding of these different phenomena for which data is critical. Let's talk a little bit more about data. 51.1% of the global population is now using the internet. The, the figures were an announced uh, last week. I just really wanted to find out from you what do you think could uh, encourage more countries uh, and help more countries to bring more people online? Um, in general, uh, the research indicates that there are three factors that drive uh, broadband and, uh, and internet usage. Uh, the first one is purely economic. 
uh, if you don't have the means to afford uh, the access to the internet by uh, having a wireless broadband subscription or fixed broadband subscription at home, uh, obviously, you know, you, you don't have access service. Uh, the second one, as I mentioned before, is digital literacy. Uh, even if you have the means, if you don't have the ability to actually conduct searches, send emails, uh, understand how uh, the internet operates in terms of a user perspective, obviously you're not going to use it. Uh, this is a, a, an important phenomenon in, in, in disadvantaged populations and it's also important generationally. You know, older people tend to have more difficulty in, in, in accessing the technology. And the third is it's the cultural relevance. I don't access the internet because I don't see that the internet can provide me with content that is useful to um, my needs from a cultural uh, standpoint, information, entertainment, um, uh, sociability, r relational with other people. So um, in, in the 50%, maybe some of those conditions have been fulfilled. But think about it, we are in 49% still that we either have issues of affordability, um, sort of like base of the pyramid kind of issues, we have issues of, 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 of literacy from a digital standpoint. How do we teach people to actually use the technology? And then local development in, in local languages. Uh, I'll give you a statistic that is quite interesting. If you look, for instance, on Wikipedia, which is essentially a public good where people access the site to get an understanding, like a dictionary, uh, uh, for instance, 3% of the articles written on Wikipedia are in Spanish. And Spanish today is being spoken by over 600 million people around the world. So if you don't speak English, you cannot use Wikipedia. And you have to develop those um, articles, that, that content, in a language that is accessible to the people that actually don't have another option. Absolutely. Finally, uh, talking about uh, messages, language, etc. What key message do you think particip participants will be taking away from this year's symposium? Uh, I believe that um, uh, so far, um, the, the if I were to emphasize, is, is, is critical policy matters. Uh, policy matters in terms of developing the performance of the sector. I tried to emphasize my, that point in my presentation. Uh, policies related to the ICT sector are critical. And in order to develop the appropriate policies, you have to have good appropriate data analysis. I think so far there are a couple of things that have come up is um, the need to actually navigate the, the, the ecosystem of information in order to find the appropriate data to develop those policies and to conduct the right analysis. And also equip policymakers with the technical capacity in-house in these um, internal administrative units, whether regulators or ministries of ICTs, with, with the capacity to conduct those analyses or at least ascertain the quality and the rigor of the analysis that are being conducted by outside parties. I think that those elements are critical right now going forward. Well, Ken, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.